All right, guys, so today we're gonna to be working on a 2021 IS350. We're gonna be doing an airlift install. So I'm gonna put some bags on this thing and drop it to the ground. As you can see right now, it's still got the stock wheels sitting at stock height, so this should be interesting. We'll see uh, how low we can get this baby when we're done. And let's check out all the parts. I've already unboxed everything. I like to kind of get everything out of the box completely, throw away all the cardboard. As you can see right over there, I got quite a big collection of it. But it helps me kind of get everything organized. That way I know exactly where all my parts are, make sure I have everything here. And if you do this, you should have a tank, you should have the miscellaneous hardware and all the fittings and stuff for the airlines, the actual airline itself. The wire harnesses, a couple compressors and this system and the management system itself and of course some connectors and of course don't forget the actual air struts themselves um, i got the fronts here and the rears all here already ready to go and uh, i guess we'll see how this goes So this uh, Lexus front suspension shouldn't be too hard to get out. Looks like it just unbolts at the top. Um, then you got this one arm on the side here, which is pretty cool. I like that it doesn't go all the way around. Make it a lot harder to get out in those, uh, those style suspensions, but this one should be pretty easy. All right, so it wasn't quite what I thought it was gonna be. Um, you don't just pull the arm out of the lower control arm because it hits the outer tie rod here, which, I figured this bolt would come off, but uh, yeah, don't do that. It actually is part of the arm, so instead, it actually unbolts, as you can see, it unbolts at the bottom of the shock, which is pretty cool. I was able to pry down and uh, on the upper control arm and uh, get it undone, so now I can just take it out from the top. All right, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison. We got the airlift air strut on the left and the OEM one on the right, of course. Uh, one thing I will note is these nuts that the airlift strut comes with are not bad. You can totally use them if you want. Uh, personally, I prefer using OEM nuts just because you get a lot more threads grabbed onto you there. It's a much bigger nut. Should be a little better for the long term. But either one should be fine. So we'll get these installed now. Alright, so we got the new front struts installed. I uh, got my leader line all hooked up, got the new fitting on, ready to go. Um, so basically what we have to do is use a jack to push up here in order to get this lower arm to match up with the air strut so you can put this bolt in. Not that bad. Alright, now we're at the back of the car. Gonna do the rear suspension here. This one looks like it should be pretty simple. Just gotta unbolt the lower control arm. That'll give us the access to the spring. Take that off. And the, sh the shock itself looks like it bolts to the inside of the car, so we'll have to take some interior pieces out of the trunk and get that unbolted as well. So as you can see, you have to tear apart the whole freaking trunk just to get to the damn top of the shock. So you're gonna unbolt it. It's fun. Thanks, Lexus. There's so much, so many interior panels and things that have to come off, but uh, <sighs> just another day. All right, so. Basically, you're supposed to take this this upper bracket here and you screw it into the 
this little upper plate above the control arm, and you have to get it twisted in just the right position, which you kind of guessing on, and you tighten down the middle bolt to hold it, and then you got the airbag, which bolts to that, and after that, you have this plate that goes on the lower control arm, and then it bolts to the airbag, but you also have to get it perfectly lined up, and your air fitting has to go right in the freaking middle hole there, and then somehow you're supposed to run an air line through this. I don't know. Still figuring it out. I guess uh, I'll just keep following Airlift's instruction book, which is pretty helpful, but also not. So, all right. So basically, this upper mount right here, you got to mount that to the car first. Now, the problem is you don't know exactly where you're supposed to rotate it at. So, I just kind of half-ass installed the bag on here with the bolts. And then this bottom mount, I attached it to the, the airbag. Uh, it's completely secured on there. It's nice and tight. And then I put the lower control arm up, and you do it until these holes match up with these little nubs on the lower control arm on both sides. Basically, I got it to where it's all perfectly aligned and then I put a paint mark up there. So now what I can do is take this bag back off, tighten the center bolt that goes on this upper mount, make sure it's nice and snug, and then put all this back together and tighten it down along with the mount that goes underneath here. Make sure it's all good. All right, that really sucked, but uh, I got it. So one thing I recommend is that when you install this airbag to this upper mount, make sure you don't forget the plates that go in between they look like little sandwich plates or something. Uh, it goes there, it goes here, and once you get everything bolted up, you should be good to go. You can use the ratcheting 14 millimeter wrench to get into the bolts on each side here, just to secure it. And underneath here, you can pretty much use, I used a quarter inch ratchet with a swivel socket. That worked out pretty good. And then now we're just gonna bolt up the lower control arm and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Oh uh, yeah, and before you go bolting up your lower control arm, make sure you install your new shock too. You don't want to try and put that thing in afterwards. That's going to be a pain in your ass. You don't want that. All right, so this is pretty much how it should look once it's all back together. Got everything installed. Uh, I know that uh, the airbag looks a little wonky the way it sits in there, but that's exactly how Airlift shows it in their pictures. So. I guess that's how it is. But uh, one thing to keep in mind is when you're tightening down these uh, suspension arm bolts, so here, here, and here, you want to have the suspension loaded, which means you kind of want to have uh, set to about where your ride height is going to be. I'm using a pull jack because I'm on a lift, but you can use a floor jack if you do it on the garage floor. Uh, but you kind of want to get it leveled as much as possible and before you tighten them down. That'll help keep the bushings from having premature wear and keep everything pretty much centered where it's supposed to be. Uh, helps out in the long run. Okay, now that we got the front and rear suspension completely done and installed, uh, we're gonna be checking the amount of clearance that we have. So we're gonna start by checking what's called maximum extension. That's gonna be from the center of this hub to the top of this fender up here. We're gonna get that height, write that down, and then we're gonna put all the wheels on the car, drop it down, and we're gonna see what our maximum compression is. And that's gonna be with this thing as up as it possibly can be. Um, and we're gonna recheck from the hub to the top of the fender again. And we're gonna see where we're at. That'll tell us how much travel that we're gonna have in our suspension system, essentially. Pretty tucked. Look at this front wheel. That's uh, I'd say that's definitely in there pretty good. So let's take some measurements and uh, see what our travel was. All right. So why did we do these measurements? Uh, basically, we wanted to know how far can the suspension travel up or down, 
And then we wanted to find that middle point. So in the front, the maximum extension for this specific vehicle was about 15 and 3 eighths of an inch. Whereas the maximum compression was about 11 and a half inches. That's a pretty decent amount of travel, but when we're riding around at our, uh, our ride height, we want to have it somewhere in the middle. Somewhere so if you hit bumps or, uh, you know, craters in the ground, depending on what kind of roads you have, you want to be able to absorb those and have the car bounce or do whatever it needs to without bottoming out, you know, up or down. So we found that the middle for the front is about 13.43 and the middle for the rear was about 13 and a half. Now the numbers of how much you, the extension or compression on front and rear, that doesn't really matter so much. They're going to be pretty close as long as your ride height suggested. And I mean, airlift's pretty good about getting it fairly close to where it should be. So that's kind of what we're just going to go with on this one. Um, but being that our, our average is about 13 and a half, we're just going to stick with that. So when we're done, we're going to air it up to about 13 and a half and that's going to be our right height. All right, so another thing to keep in mind, um, any, any decent suspension components aftermarket like this, whether it's coilovers or airbag setups, you're going to have a damping adjustment on here. And you can set that as soft as you want or as hard as you want. This specific setup allows 30 clicks of adjustment, which means I can turn this to the right about 30 clicks, and that'll be at its hardest setting. So the rebound, driving around, is going to be pretty stiff. Whereas this customer wanted it pretty stiff, so I put it at about 25 in the front, and I think we'll do maybe 22 in the rear, and uh, we'll see how that feels. All right, now comes the fun part, where we get to figure out where we want to mount everything in the trunk. Uh, this customer told me I can take the spare tire out, so that's pretty helpful. Gives me a lot more space to work with back here. Uh, I can put things pretty much wherever I want to. And I decided I was gonna put the management system maybe right about there. But it's probably a good thing that I didn't put it there. Um, uh, you know, anytime you guys are working on a car like this, always check and see where you're drilling into. Because if you look underneath, which I decided to do, I took the panel off. And the charcoal canister is down here. Uh, the whole EVAP canister, everything. Um, so if I would have drilled into that, that would have been a problem that I, I don't want to have. And that would suck for the customer, suck for me. It also suck for you if you did it too. So just be careful where you guys are putting things. All right, so I ended up creating a wood block here. Um, I kind of tapered the holes a little bit so I can fit those Phillips head bolts all the way through. And uh, this thing's pretty secure. It's got nut and bolt, so it nuts on the bottom. And this management system will basically go right on top there. And I can feed the air lines right into it, no problem. Uh, anytime you're creating in like an air setup like this you kind of just have to do custom stuff It's not always going to be simple. You got to come up with your own ideas Find out what works um, I think this one will work just fine for this. So I guess we'll see where goes from here All right, so I got the rear lines ran from the airbag. Can you even see them? Not really they actually kind of come It's hard to tell but they have to be ran through here and instead of having them come out this hole and then have a chance of them getting damaged somehow, I actually found a way to route them up through this. They go right through the frame there, the subframe. It goes up that way and comes out right about there. And uh, goes all the way back above the EVAP canister and goes into the wheel well right about there. So this should be pretty easy to run straight to the management system. No big deal. And every time I do one of these, if I run lines on the outside of the car, I always cover it with this quarter inch wire loom. It just really does a good job of helping protect it, keep it safe from environmental crap, or even if you're in areas like this where over time, being against this metal could lead to cutting the hose open or something, this wire loom does a good job of preventing that. So just something to keep in mind. All right guys, so for the front lines, I've already kind of started. Uh, I got my leader lines ran. Um, I have this nice and loose right here, so it's not going to get caught anything, not going to rub through, uh, not going to be an issue in the future. And I got it nice and secure to the uh, chassis of the car using these clamps and some um, little self tappers. I had to drill through a couple of these spots here first, so I pre drilled them using good drill bits, which you're definitely going to want to invest in. I highly recommend it. Here, 
It's actually a really nice set. Of course, Milwaukee uh, power tools. But this one's from Cleline. Cle Cleline. Clellin. Cle Cle yep, that one. So I'm using that brand. And uh, it's actually really good. It's going to cost a lot more than your cheap Harbor Freight bits, but uh, it'll drill right through the, the pinch welds and the chassis a lot better. So my goal now is I'm going to run it from here, where I got my leader line ended up. It's going to go down this way along the chassis, along the bottom of the frame here. It's going to go basically underneath these panels all the way back. And you always want to run them, if you're going to run them underneath the vehicle, run them underneath some paneling. Newer cars have a lot of it, so it's a lot easier to uh, do that. If you have an older car where you don't have any plastic paneling underneath or any good way to secure the lines to protect them from any kind of outside debris, uh, anything at all, then you're probably better off running them inside the car. But some people out there say you have to run them inside the vehicle at all times, no matter what. But that's not really true. Uh, if you actually if you go to Airlift's website, they even have a page, and it, it tells you right here. It gives you a, actually a pretty good little document on how to run lines, uh, precautions, what to be careful of, and uh, it tells you if you're going to run them underneath the vehicle, just get them hidden underneath some panels, run them along brake lines, anywhere that your your vehicle has lines running underneath the vehicle, you know, somewhere safe. Me personally, I like running them underneath because I work on a lift, right? So it's a lot easier for me to just stand under the vehicle, run them the way that I need to, and I can run it all the way through the back and into the wheel well, kind of where I have the back ones going to as well. Everything comes into the trunk nice and uniformly. Uh, no chances of pinching the wire or, or the lines anywhere inside the car, on interior panels, or anything like that. Or even, you know, worrying about damaging stuff inside the car as you're taking everything apart. It's just, I, I find this is a much better way to do it, and uh, works for me. All right, so I got the line ran. Starts here, goes underneath, nice and snug against the body. Goes right underneath this panel, can't see it at all, all the way down. And then comes out right here next to the gas tank. Goes straight up along the top completely above everything, the subframe, any kind of rotating or moving components, nothing gonna be hurting the line at all. Comes out this way, over top of the subframe, right next to the one that runs along the back. Boom, boom, boom. Right there. That should be uh, nice and secure, nice and safe, completely away from any heat source, nothing at all to worry about. And once I get this uh, cover back over the EVAP canister, it'll be even more protected, so. I'm gonna run the other side now and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, so here in the trunk, you can see I got all the lines nice and tidied up. Uh, they're both coming in through these plugs in the body, which is great, really good spot to go through. I got them all nice and zip tied so they look fancy, even though no one will ever really see them unless they're under here to work on something, but I like to make it look nice anyway. And then I have my exhaust running to the outside of the car. A lot of people really like that because then you get the loud noise when it uh, airs out. So everybody in the parking lot knows you're kind of a badass. It's a, it's a nice little touch. Now I got to run the wiring harness all the way from here up to the battery. And the battery in this one is on the passenger side. So we're going to have to run all the wiring up that way. I got to figure out how I'm going to do this. All right. So because of the way this car is designed, um, the battery is on this side. Normally, I would run everything up the driver's side because the battery would be over there. It would be a little bit easier to get to. But in this case, uh, I had to go up this way. So I figured, what if I can tap into this fuse box here for the turn-on wire for the, the system? But I tested every single thing in here. All of them have power going to them at all times. So there's nothing I can use in this box, unfortunately, which means I had to run the power wires here, which let me turn my light on. You can see, come through that little grommet, which that was quite fun. So this is going to be routed up around the battery once I get that done. Then I basically just ran the wires from the kick panel through the firewall all the way down this way. Comes through here, goes through there, and then underneath the seat all nice and cleanly. You can see I still got to clean up some of this wiring back here, which I'll be doing next. 
and then the USB and the remote turn on wire both come underneath this side run up the driver's side up to the uh, the fuse box underneath the dash there and there you can see I ran it into the where the basically the radio fuse is so that way it just takes the tiny bit of amperage off that circuit to tell the airbag system to turn on. Oh, by the way, the uh, the other couple of wires that are just going into a fuse, yeah, I didn't do that. I don't know what that's for. All right, guys, so that took a while. Um, I basically took all the wiring for this entire thing, and I shoved it under the back seat. Oh, fuck you, compressor! Anyway, uh, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted, so... Everything's underneath the seat, and the best part is you can't even tell. It's all uh, snug under there. I try to get everything as clean as I possibly could, but when you have that many wires that are a little bit too long and a bunch of crap, it's it's never going to be super great anyway. But at least it gives a really nice, clean appearance in the trunk here. So I got most of the interior pieces back in. The last thing I got to do is build the trunk setup, which should be fairly simple in this one. So hopefully that doesn't take too long. Oh my god, I hate this white fluffy crap so much. Every year this stuff comes in the shop and gets freaking everywhere. Ugh. Okay, so I got my line ran from the management system. It's going to go to the tank. That comes out that way, and it's going to connect to this. So here's my setup. Simple. Still time consuming to make. Uh, I actually had to cut out a piece of cardboard to put underneath this thing just to have something a little bit more stable to mount it to. So I'm going to get this installed, run the airlines in, and uh, let's see if this thing works. Alright, check it out. So we got it in the trunk, got everything hooked up, got my lines ran, got wire loom on the, the power and ground wires going to the compressors, got it nice and clean looking. All we got to do now is, uh, I guess, test it out and see how it works. All right, it's getting kind of laid out, but I uh, finally got the whole system done. Everything works, no issues. There's the setup in the trunk. Pretty simple, but it works good. Uh, I'm already set the calibration. I set the right height, I set the lowered height, and I set the, the upper height. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, I'll show you what it looks like here in just a second. 